And now, here's Dialogue, a podcast with Gene Richard from KBZE 105.9 FM. Today's show is being sponsored by... Hey, Jess, it's the end of the year. You know what that means. Is it time for Mardi Gras? No, it's time for the Red Tag Year-End Event. It's your chance to save on every car and truck on the lot, plus get additional rebates on most new cars. And remember, no credit, bad credit, we can help. We say yes when others say no. And we want to wish everyone a, a Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas and a Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. AJ Doman Chevrolet at the foot of the Morgan City Bridge in Burwick. And welcome back, viewers. We've got with us today the former, no, I shouldn't say former, the soon-to-be former mayor of Thibodeau that we're going to interview today. And I just want to pass it on to KBZE. A great big thank you for putting on our program. And, of course, uh, at the same time, they are on 105.9 FM uh, right out of Morgan City. So I think I was on the other end of this doing all, all, the, all the, the hard work, and the mayor and I get to do the easy work. And I said with us today is Mayor uh, Tommy Eshte, outgoing Mayor Tommy Eshte. And what, three weeks left, sir? Yeah, About three weeks to go? Yeah, and, that's what they told me this morning. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I was just, in fact, I was just looking at the calendars, viewers, and you should be looking at it pretty good yourself when it comes uh, in the mail in the next couple of three weeks. And in it was some of the some of the accomplishments uh, that have happened over the twelve years. And Mayor, if you wouldn't mind just talking about that for a little bit, because you know what, we forget about a lot of them. It was, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff that happens in and out of city of Thibodeau is out of sight, out of mind, right? Amen. Uh, you know, like you always say, you know, if, if you turn on your faucet and your water runs and you flush your toilets and they flush, you know, they pick up your garbage, everything good. Life is good, right? right. Uh, but it's those those projects that we, we sort of sometimes take for granted. But the ones that we, you know, in looking back, and we had to sit back and kind of say, you know, you, what, what can we hang our hats on for the last 12 years? And so we decided when we put our calendar out this year that we'd look at those. And, you know, when we did, uh, one of the, one of the I guess you would call it the highlight of some of the projects that, that we actually constructed in the last 12 years, I've always been so proud of, is, is the uh, North Canal Boulevard redevelopment. Uh, it was It was special. To me, because I saw that, and I think everybody saw that the growth was 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 out there. Uh, but if you looked at the traffic infrastructure, it it wasn't what we needed to support the continued growth out there. We had an opportunity to pick up uh, from a small capital outlay uh, allocation uh, back in two thousand nine, I believe, and grew it into an eleven point three million dollar project that cost the city nothing. And I can't take all credit for that. A lot of the credit goes to the Department of Transportation Development and uh, the secretary at that time was Sherry LeBar, who helped us move through a plan which um, incorporated uh, federal highway safety money into the project, uh, money that we were able to capture and use as long as we agreed to those innovative designs that we see out there, the J-turns and the R cuts and, and on and on, and the elimination of some traffic signals. I think the project wound up being fantastic. And so you know, that's just one of the projects. We have many that we, we put in the calendar. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, those things just kind of happen. We had to sit back and go, yeah, this happened in the last 12 years or this happened in the last 12 years. And it just kind of it just kind of happened. But that's that's what I think is a result of working together with the council. Uh, working together as a team with the department heads and partnering, more important, partnering with the other agencies in Thibodeau, whether it was Nichols, uh, the school board, uh, the hospital, you know, uh, and on and on. It's just partnering and, and making the best use, leveraging our tax dollars, getting those projects done. And they just, they happen, which was a good thing. Absolutely. You know, the other one, too, that I, that comes to my mind when you talk about as long as your toilet's flush, what is the, is the north side, was the north side sewer project. Huge, big project, and that's one of those things, definitely out of sight, out of mind. But, man, the good that thing does now and is going to do uh, in the future. You know, absolutely. Those that was when you look kind of. Sometimes you look, you want to look forward. Right? Absolutely, and that was one of the projects that we and we've been forewarned. Hey, look, you know, our capacity for wastewater treatment is is getting to a point where we have to look at: do we redesign and enlarge our old south plant, or do we look at the construction of a new wastewater facility? And again, 
when you look at a location, which really made just made sense to put it on the north side of town uh, so that we could continue to be able to service our city as it grows. And again, a big project, probably around $12 million uh, funded through the sale of bonds. But uh, it, and, and look, we're still in the final phase of that project, which probably started probably 10 years ago. Uh, but we're in the last in, uh, phase of it. Uh, the the uh, plan has been online for about a year and a half, two years now. Um, and we have the, the capability to uh, to accept an increase in, in wastewater volume for years to come and also the ability to expand the plant should we need to do that. So that's that was a, a vision that we we thought we had to uh, act on. Um, it was important so that the city could continue to grow, although I'm not one that's looking to have the city grow too fast. Yeah. I've always said that. But I think it was something we had to take the bull by the horns and, and, and happen. And again, uh, working together with, with, with the council and working together with our area leaders so that we could we could sell the, the need for the project to the public. And um, that was a good thing. And it, it had to happen. Well, you know, some of the things, of course, uh, you're not going to be here to see completed. But I know t three of the three of them that I can think right off the top of my head that interested me a lot and that you've been hot on uh, for many, many years is the two is the uh, the two circles, the two traffic circles, one on Jackson Canal and the other one out on uh, Percy Brown, of course, two, those two things are coming, and the Canal Street Bridge. You want to elaborate? And of course, you're not going to be here, but the projects will go yeah, on. Thank right, goodness. Right, right. Absolutely. You know, well, we've all kind of looked at that Canal Boulevard Bridge for years to come. I mean, for years and years, and we knew what was around the corner, right? Uh, the, the load limits uh, in the inspections, annual inspections, continue to go down. We knew that there was an issue there, and repair was not an option. Uh, so, you know, in looking at you know, the, the time it would take to plan, design, and construct a project of that magnitude, uh, we knew it was going to take a long time. So we started that process as soon as we could acquire the adequate funding for it. We did that probably about three years ago. We're in the design phase today. Uh, we've acquired most of the funding for the project, which is going to probably be in the 7 to $8 million range. Uh, we still have another grant we're waiting to hear about and some funding through state capital outlay. So, you know, that project is, is, is ready to go. Our other two traffic circuits, roundabouts, whatever you want to call them, the one at Jackson Canal is, actually went to bid about a month ago. Uh, we're, we're, we're waiting to hear from Department of Transportation Development about a notice to proceed on that. More importantly, though, is the traffic circle at North and South Acadia and LA 648, which really is a, a safety issue. Um, I mean, you know it because that's a business in your district. Uh, the, the the near misses we've had there quite a for quite a few, um, and we've we've got that project incorporated in our Homer Thibodeau MPO uh, transportation improvement program. The funding is allocated. We're we're probably looking at another two years, but at least we have our stage zero environmental done. We're getting close to and working to try to get the engineer. Uh, selection process completed um, and, and move that project forward. Uh, it's going to happen. It never happens fast enough, right, especially in a situation like yep. that. But those those projects are, you know, they're ready to roll. Uh, I want to say they're, you know, they're the shovel ready, so to say. Um, and, and that'll be some projects for Kevin and new administration uh, to take the bull by the horns, make sure those get done. I want to call down God's blessing upon this place. I hope that, as Greg Stock said, this will be a place where conversations can be held with family members and also with the living God. Blessed are you, O God, our Father, you who love us through so many things. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have commanded your people who walk in newness of life to care compassionately for those who are sick, in a special way for those who suffer from cancer. Loving God, attend to the desires of your children and hear our prayer 
respond to our need. By the grace of the Holy Spirit, make this place, this cancer center, a place of blessing and healing, a center of love, where physicians practice the art of healing wisely, where nurses and aides serve the sick with care, where the faithful come to visit Christ in the person of their brothers and sisters who struggle with illness. Loving God, bless this place and send your angels to guard it. May the sound of these bells pierce the heavens, lifting our intentions and our desires and our hopes to you. Grant that those who come here struggling with cancer might be comforted in their illness, that their family members will know that they will receive the care that they need, that patients will quickly regain their health, that they will open themselves to your will for them, and that in all things, O oh Lord, they will joyfully thank you for the favors that they have received. And so loving God in your great kindness and mercy, pour out upon this place your abundant grace and blessing, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, 12 years as mayor, how many years as city clerk? 25. 25, so that's 35, 47 years. Well, 37. 30, 37 years in public right. service. Right. And time has, has finally come for yes. you. Um, I, I guess my question to you is this, and of course, I knew you when you were city clerk. That's I, I've been in it 20, 24 years myself, and of course, watched you go through three years of being mayor. What you gonna do? What you gonna do now? <laughs> well, you know, I, I there, there's a couple of, uh, of of offers that have had to just keep me busy on a part time basis. You know, I'm not going to an office in the morning. Uh, it, it's it's mostly some stuff I can do from home, uh, but I will be on the golf course a little bit more, um, and and I'm looking forward to that. You know, uh, you don't really realize, and I talked to, to my friend Cam the other day. We were chatting. He says, Tommy, you're not going to, even though you don't think your job is stressful, you're not going to realize how much stress is removed from you yeah. once you leave office. He says, and you're going you're gonna to realize. It can take a little while, but you'll realize that. He says, um, so look forward to that, which I am. But, um, you know, hell, Thibodeau's so small. You know, we have all our friends and family still here. Um, you know, it's it's time for somebody else to take over the reins. But like I told Kevin and I and I, you know, his all of his department heads when they come in, I'm a phone call away. If you need anything, I'll certainly be there to help. Uh, but I'm looking forward to doing a couple of things different and uh, again, not having to get up in the morning and go to an office and spend the day there. That's somewhat refreshing. It is. I can tell you. Yeah. I can tell you it is having having gone through what you're going through now a few years back. But uh, on behalf of everyone that I, I know would want to tell you, uh, first of all, a, a big thank you for all you've done for all the service that you the years of service, 37 years of public service that you have put in. Uh, but I want to say on behalf of everybody, thank you for all you've done. And uh, I know you're looking forward to retirement, semi-retirement, yep, right. however you want to call it. And uh, I hope it's as good for you as it is for me. You know, and and, and you know when, when you look at it, we've had, we have, and, and I've, I've made so many friends, um, and 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 nurtured so many relationships over the years. Uh, people that you never ever ever would have would have probably probably wouldn't have known. But more importantly, I think what we what, what makes me happy is, you know, you run for office. You've done it so many times. You, you have people that support you all the time. You have some people that don't. And at the end of the day, though, and I, you know, you know, for whatever reason, that's what elections are for, right? But at the end of the day, there were so many people that I know probably wasn't voting for me or maybe wasn't supporting me when I ran. But now they're all good friends. 
And I think that part, you know, it was it was an accomplishment to say, you know what, when I said this 12 years ago, we're all in this together. We are, and uh, and we've taken that that sort of a, a attitude toward you know uh, providing our service here and, and we you know we don't get rich being a, a public off you know public official but at the end of the day um you know when you when you can go home and say hey look i, I thought we did a good job and this this next crew that's coming in behind us is gonna probably have it easier than we had it and hopefully that's the attitude that everybody can you know when kevin's time is up and he'll he'll be able to say i hope we've laid you know we've done a better job than tommy did and that we're going to lay a, a better foundation so and i think we've done that so i'm i'm happy about that and look one last thing because i can't hey. you know for 12 years and i haven't done it much last is to to go to events and to 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 make sure you were there you were there as mayor to represent the city and that's not yeah, always right. and i was you know and but at the end of the day i gotta i gotta thank sherry for that because that was a person who always pushed me to do those things that you don't really want to do. And uh, and I told her the other day, we were talking about it, and I said, she's been one hell of a, a first lady for us for the past 12 years, and I want to thank her for that. Amen. Mayor Tom S.J., thank you for taking the time, number one. Number two, enjoy your semi-retirement, and thanks for being with us today. Viewers, thank you for watching this again, and I look forward to the next one. So you have a great day. Justice is responsible for the content of this ad. Attention Marines, military, contractors, and family members stationed at Camp Lejeune for 30 days or longer between August 1953 and December of 1987. For 34 years, those at Camp Lejeune were exposed to contaminated drinking water, resulting in devastating injuries. Passage of the Camp Lejeune Justice Act of 2022 would allow victims to seek compensation for illnesses and injuries linked to the toxic water. For a free consultation, call 800-311-3532. That's 800-311-3532. Lagasse here, and I'm so excited to tell you about my French Door Air Fryer 360. Extra large 26 quart capacity. Cook with up to 70% less calories from fat than deep frying. That's a big deal, my friend. 360 degrees of superheated air gives you fast, even cooking. My 10 in 1 French Door Air Fryer 360s grills, air fries, dehydrates, roasts, bakes, broils, proofs, slow cooks, and toasts. This baby does it all. These French doors are a game changer. Look at how easy that is. Now, find out how you can try Emeril Lagasse's French Door Air Fryer 360 with three cooking tiers, fetch tool, air frying rack, and drip tray in your home for 30 days for just $14.99. Order now and you'll also get Emeril's Air Fryer Favorites recipe book. And we'll automatically upgrade you to our bonus cooking kit free. Plus, find out how you can get free shipping. This offer will not last, so call or click now to order. You're going to love it. I guarantee it. We're right here. Hey, thanks for locking it in on the Steve Harvey Morning Show right here on KBZE 105.9 FM. Well, hey, everybody. Your old friend is back, and I'm keeping up with technology. Hello, friends. It's Gene Richard inviting you to join me for Dialogue, a video and audio podcast presented by KBZE 105.9 FM. Look for the podcast on my Facebook page, on the KBZE YouTube page, and on the Thibodeau Now Facebook page. The audio podcast will be available on these social media apps, Podbean and TuneIn. Stay up to date with Thibodeau News on Dialogue, the podcast. We're going to change it up once a week and hopefully more as it grows in viewer and listenership.